I am using a different account so that my husband doesn't know. Before meeting my current husband, I was married to my ex-husband, Dave. Dave and I met when we were five years old. He moved into our neighborhood when he was five. He was this cute boy next door. We became inseparable. Even our parents joked that when we would be adults, we would be married. Ever since I knew the concept of marriage, I was determined that I would marry Dave. We were like soulmates. We had the same interests, the same hobbies, the similar thoughts. He was my first everything, my first kiss, my first boyfriend, the guy I lost my virginity. Among our friends, we were the perfect couple. After graduating high school, we immediately got married. I got into a good school, but I decided to study with Dave. We got married right after we finished high school. Our parents helped us find an apartment closer to our school. We worked hard. We would often talk about having kids. On our sixth anniversary, we decided that we would try for a baby next year. I still remember the day when we were teenagers and cuddling. We already decided what our baby's names would be. During our seventh year of marriage, my mom got sick, so I had to stay with her for a while. I was planning to do something special for our seventh year anniversary, so I left early to surprise him. I went to my bedroom and there I saw my husband freaking another girl in our marital bed. I can never get that image out of my head. My husband saw me and his face turned to pale. I don't know what happened, but I threw up right in the spot. My husband was giving me the usual, it's not what it looks like, I am sorry, it was a mistake. I locked myself in the bathroom. I somehow mustered my strength and called my friend to pick me up and just don't listen to Dave. When my friend arrived, she charged at Dave. She grabbed some of my things and we left. I was in a catatonic stage at that point. Eventually, my parents knew. They supported on whatever decision I would make. Dave's parents, however, wanted us to be together. There was a huge fight, but eventually we settled for divorce. My whole fairy tale fantasy just shattered. I was spiraling into depression. My parents booked me a therapy. For two years, I was like a living corpse. After that, my friend pushed me to go on a date. I did, but no one even came close to Dave. I was searching for Dave in every guy, but they all failed to live up to the expectation. That is when I met my now husband, Jay. Jay was the opposite of Dave. Dave was funny. He would be the life of the party. I remember one time he made me laugh so hard that I fell from my chair. But Jay was not funny like Dave. He would use humor only as clapbacks, and if he wants to insult someone, he was also very stoic and closed off. Pretty boring to my taste. On our first date, I asked him some questions like, what is your favorite movie? He told me he doesn't watch movie. He liked reading. He didn't even ask me a thing, except for my educational background. He talked mostly about my field of work, but he was not interested in me. We ate dinner in silence. I was 100% sure he will not call me, but two days later he did. He asked me out on a second date. I was skeptical of whether or not I should go, but my friend insisted. I gave it another try. Second date went slightly better than first. He talked a bit more, asked few questions. We were taking it slow. He was opening up until the sixth date when he finally hooked up. TMI, it was amazing. I am someone who has a snack after having intimacy. I was craving for some, so I asked him if I could grab something from his pantry. Even a bread and cheese sandwich will do. He told me to stay there and he went out. I was kind of confused. He came back after 20 minutes with takeout food. It was something I really liked, orange chicken. I asked how he knew. He told me, you told me on our previous date, I melted right there. Dave and I have been together for most of my life, but he never made the effort of going out and get me something. That's when I knew, even if he was not my soulmate, I was madly in love with him. We dated for three years and got married. I came to know about Jay's family too. His mom and dad were drug addicts who died of overdose. He was homeless for a while, but worked his way up. Throughout our marriage, I was very, very happy. He was different from Dave because whenever he would see me doing chores, he would ask, need help? He helped me through my trauma from Dave by arranging a therapist that specializes in infidelity. He may not be a person of words, but his actions tells me that he loves me. When I was pregnant with our daughter, I would wake him up in the middle of the night to either get me food or rub my feet. He would say, yes, ma'am, and get to work. 
I love him. Even after 15 years of marriage, my love has not stopped. He is still the stoic man I fell in love with. After meeting him, I stopped believing in the concept of a soulmate. He was not mine, but we somehow make it work. I love you, Jay. Thanks for being there in my life. And anyone who is wondering what happened to Dave, he is getting his third divorce. His mom blames me for his downfall, but she refuses to see that her son cheated on his every marriage. Now for a few comments. Commenter, who knows? Maybe Jay is your soulmate. He seems to be more ideally suited to you from the beginning than Dave ever was. OP replied, from the outside, we do not look like soulmates. Dave and I were the typical girl next door and boy next door kind of people. Jay was more closed off. Initially, when I was dating him, he was really rude in my opinion. He also has a bad temper towards people who screw up. But other than that, he is good and kind. He helps those who genuinely needs help. Another commenter said, after reading this, all I can say is Frick Dave, metaphorically, and Frick J, literally, in several positions, then have a nice dessert. I'm glad to hear you are happy. Hope you, Jay, and your kids have many, many more happy years ahead of you. OP responded, Frick J, literally, in several positions, then have a nice dessert. I've been doing that for 18 years, lol, and he still gets me snack. Three. Another commenter said, his mom blames me for his downfall because it can't be the fault of her freaking child being an immoral, faulty human being, could it? I am Polly. I have a different attitude to intimacy around a relationship, but promises are promises regardless. Commitment is commitment no matter what flavor, and Dave is clearly emotionally incomplete. I never believed in soulmates. From childhood. But you know when it works, when it's right. You just had to have a trial marriage to refine your definition. OP replied, According to his mom, he was devastated when I wanted divorce. She tried to convince me to stay with him, even after knowing he so cheated. She was angry at me and my parents when I said no. She blames me because she thinks that if I had stayed, her son would not have become a serial cheater because I could fix him. His other marriage failed because he was a mess because of me, not because he was freaking other people on the side. Dave was never your soulmate. Jay was just took time to find him. When I asked Jay about if he believes in soulmates, he told me, I don't believe that crap. It's just like horoscope. People believe in it because it makes them feel better. A lot of potential good relationships get broken because of this crap. I was kind of devastated that he doesn't believe in soulmates. Can you believe in these 18 years? We have only said, I love you, only five times as far as I can count. I want to say it more. My husband, male 47 and I, female 46, have been together for 18 years and married for 15. My husband is not the type who always shows his feelings. He is very stoic, smiles on very few occasions and maintains a routine. Some even say that he is a robot, but I don't think so. I am someone who is very outgoing and completely the opposite of him. Before I was married to him, I was married to someone else who cheated on me. I used to say, I love you, a lot in my first marriage. But after my divorce, I had some sort of aversion to those words. Over the last 18 years, we have said, I love you only five times. The first time was when we were dating. The second was on our wedding day. The third and fourth, when our daughter and son were born. And the fifth was five years ago on Christmas when we were really tipsy because of the drinks. I wrote a post about how I met him and how we got together but it made me realize that we haven't said I love you to each other for a long time. But it didn't bother me. Even if he never said it, he always shows that he loves me in his actions. He does chores for me, gives me a foot massage, makes me my favorite dish, and even kisses me out of the blue. I do not have any complaints. He is the best husband anyone could ever ask for. But this was something that has been in the back of my mind for a while. We cuddle, we hang out, we make love, but still no, I love yous. I would love to hear it and say it more often, but somehow it just makes me nervous. I decided to buckle up and just say it. It's just three words. So yesterday when he was reading a book on the couch, I stood in front of him and said, I love you. He looked at me and was confused. I repeated it. For the first time, I could see him get flustered. He told me, okay. I was a little disappointed by his response. I thought he just didn't love me anymore. Later that night, when I was lying down, 
He came to our bedroom and told me that he is sorry for his response, that it caught him off guard. He told me that he loves me a lot, and not even a day goes by he doesn't feel lucky to have me in his life. I was tearing up. That was better than my confession. I asked him why we don't say that often. He told me that he doesn't say it because throughout his entire life, no one has said it to him except for me. His parents were drug addicts who cared less for him. He had to start working since 14. He grew up in hardships, so saying I love yous are weird for him. But also he feels like we didn't have to tell each other when we express it with our actions way more. I told him I want to say it more now and want him to say it back if that's okay with him. I saw him smile for a while. He said it is fine as long as I want it. I don't think we need to say it when we know we love each other a lot. We will probably stop saying it after a few days and go back to our mundane events lull. A lot of you people have been asking me and personally messaging me about Jay's upbringing and how he managed to survive. Well, I am not sure if I am the right person to talk about his personal life. I mean, I heard some parts which really made me cry. Therefore, I will try to summarize it. So my husband Jay is an only child. His mom and dad were from a poor family. They were drug addicts. His household was a mess. He remembers his father pushing him down the stairs when he was like eight. Jay mostly grew up with his grandfather, his mom's dad. As far as I know, his mom was not allowed to come to his grandfather's house. Jay mostly spent his weekdays at his house. His mom and dad didn't care. They were always high and had odd visitors. His grandfather taught him a lot of things, like handling tools, woodwork, and electric repair stuff. Ever since he was little, with some advice from his grandfather, he learned that his parents are very useless. He has to survive on his own. All they know is how to do drugs and invite people for having group intimacy. He started doing odd jobs like dog sitting, car and window washing, and gardening. He also tutored from time to time. Shortly after his parents died of an overdose, he became a permanent resident of his grandfather's house. He worked so that he could afford to go to college. His grandfather had little money for him, but it wasn't enough. He thought about joining the army at 18, but he failed the physical test. When he was 17, his grandfather died of a heart attack. His grandfather lived in a rented house, so Jay couldn't live there anymore. He was forced to live in a homeless shelter throughout his high school. He even got bullied and got in trouble for standing up for his bullies. But since he was a good student, he didn't face serious repercussions. He left the homeless shelter when a pastor from their local church took him in. He knew Jay because he worked in the church for a while. The pastor was a nice guy. He funded his living and also helped him get a scholarship to a good university. Jay studied finance and business. His entire childhood, he lived in poverty. So he was obsessed with learning how to make money. He made some connections which landed him a good part-time job during his final year. I met Jay through my friend. She worked in the same company as him. He worked as an investment banker at that time, and the rest you all know. This is pretty much it. I understand why he is so stoic and doesn't show his emotions. I once asked out of curiosity that he saw the harsh reality of life, but still, how does he manage to stay good? He once told me about this couple whose children he used to tutor. They were a really happy family in his eyes. The husband loved his wife. He mentioned that the husband would always have a hand on his wife's body as a form of affection. Their children were also well-behaved and had a good childhood. From that moment, he knew he wanted a family like that because he never had a complete family. But he was sure that somebody would not be able to love him because he doesn't know how to show love. Throughout his entire childhood, he has only seen his parents fight and cheat on each other in front of each other. That really destroyed his perception of love. If it wasn't for that couple, he probably wouldn't believe that there are people in this world who can love each other for life. It is a little wrong of me to say he displays no emotions. He does, but on rare occasions. I remember the day our daughter was born. Jay held her and cried loudly. He kept repeating, I will protect you. I never leave you. He did say I love you to both me and her. Same thing happened when our son was born. I mean, it gave me an idea to just pop out babies so that I can see his emotional face, haha. -ha. 
But anyways, I know he does love me and our little family. He always holds me tight whenever we are cuddling. He is really good with my parents. My parents also adore him. Sometimes it just makes me cry knowing that he has been through a lot and I have lived such a sheltered life. Sometimes I feel like I don't deserve him because he is very kind and a good person. Also, yeah, we do say I love you a lot more now. I just wanted to give big thanks to everyone for who has been kind and supportive. I cannot imagine that so many people will come through because of my post. A lot of you suggested therapy. T-Bye, I did in the past, but my husband brushed it off by saying his past rarely bothers him. Thanks to people in Reddit, I suggested him some articles on PTSD and childhood trauma. He studied for a bit and found a therapist for him to help him with his trauma. He only had two sessions till now. A few days ago, he came home from work and I went to greet him like usual. He pulled in for a big hug and started sobbing. I told him it's okay. We went to our bedroom where we sat down and talked. He told me that he was sorry for being so ice cold all these years. He opened up more and said he was afraid to confront his demons, so he just kept them back in his head. He had trouble expressing how he felt. He felt guilty that he didn't say he loves more often. I'm just paraphrasing what he told me. I love you with all my heart. I know I don't say it, but I feel it every day and every moment. I am sorry for taking away all those years from you, for not expressing my love for you. Words cannot express what you actually mean to me. You gave me my kids, made my house a home. I never had that growing up. I always wanted that and you made it happen. I am sorry that I was so cold and never said I love you more, because I do. I love you a lot. I want to make it up to you. I don't want to waste another second of my life burying those emotions anymore. It feels good to see him vulnerable first time in his life. I cried with him that night. We talked a lot about our marriage and the times we spent. It was a real bonding experience. From that day on, he has been really attentive towards me. He would always come home as early as possible to simply have more time with me. We cuddle a lot and also make love. Except this time it feels new and different, like a new found love. He has been saying I love you to my kids. My son is confused and my daughter just said, Dad, you are weird. He is thinking about planning a trip for just two of us because it has been really long since we had went on a trip alone. So thanks, Reddit. You gave me a new version of my husband and probably strengthen my marriage with him. Not that there was problems, but I hope my husband would not be so haunted by his demons now.